I don't know if this is going to be the smartest or the most stupid thing I'm ever going to do, but bottom line is I really want an electric pickup truck. And more specifically, I really want a Tesla pickup, but they haven't released one yet. And rumors have it that they're going to announce one this summer, but then it's going to be like years before you could actually have one. And I don't have time to wait for that. I need to haul lumber and dead bodies right now. So I'm just going to have to make my own. It's the only sane option. Okay, maybe there would be some other options, but let's not think too much about that. Elon Musk, this is me challenging you to making the world's first functional Tesla pickup truck. I know people call me the queen of shitty robots and that my track record isn't terribly impressive so far, but I have an angle grinder and a welder and I'm not afraid to use them. We've actually been planning this project for over a year. Like it's a year ago that we first had the idea, but then I had a brain tumor and some stuff happened and yeah, but now we're back at it. So I've been working together with Marcos Ramirez, who I've built a bunch of projects with before and we've laid out a plan and these are the basics. This is gonna be super scrappy. Like the truck itself is gonna be great, but the process is gonna be scrappy AF. We're gonna make it out of a Tesla Model 3 because it has a steel chassis, which is easier to fabricate for. The Model S has an aluminum chassis. And also surprisingly enough, the cheapest option is actually to buy a new Model 3 because they just released their standard range Model 3 and it's actually cheaper to buy that one than a secondhand long range one. We've been going through a bunch of different designs and the easiest thing would probably be to just strip everything in the back and put in a flatbed. So it would just be like a Tesla head with a flatbed butt, with a truck butt. <laughs> but I don't really like the look of that. So instead what we're gonna do, and which is probably gonna be a lot harder, is to try and save as much of the original body lines as possible. So essentially just cut out the top part of the back seat and of the trunk and then embed a truck bed into the existing chassis. This is gonna be so much work, like crazy amounts of work. It's definitely the biggest project that we've ever taken on. So we're gonna need a lot of help. Laura Kampf and Rich Rebuilds are coming in for the first part of this project to help out. And then also we're just gonna bring in as many friends as we can to, to get this done. It's gonna be a pull in favor frenzy, also known as a piff. It's when you pull in favors from all your friends to get something done, yeah. We're gonna piff all the way to Truckla. I'm uh, getting ready to buy the car. It feels like I shouldn't be allowed to do this. I feel like a grown up is gonna come and tell me that I'm not allowed. Do I need to ask anybody for permission? Simone, are you allowed to buy this car? Yes, you're allowed to buy this car. You're the CEO of the company. You're also a grown ass fucking woman. You can buy a car if you want to. Place order. Your order's complete. Oh, fuck, I just bought a car. I just put in down payment on a fucking Tesla and I'm gonna cut it up. I'm gonna transform it into my ultimate dream car. <laughs> We're getting the car today. Don't look it in the eyes. Don't give it a name. I've been thinking that I should pee the trunk so I don't get attached to it. I'm just excited to like have the car and be able to start taking measurements off of it because Marcos and I have just been total weirdos in San Francisco and like as soon as we see a Model 3 we're like okay I'm gonna cut it here like what if we go it against here and like people come up and they're like hey this is my car. Are we all set? You guys are all set. Yeah? Set. Fuck I own a car! Oh gosh! <laughs> I can't believe I'm allowed to do this. I am so nervous that I'm gonna get cold feet and realize I really like having a five-seater car and that I'm gonna not do it. But Laura's coming to town, Rich is coming to town, everybody's tickets are booked, we have a workshop. You're gonna become a truck. You're gonna become the world's first Tesla pickup that's on the roads, kind of. World's most official, inofficial Tesla pickup. Should we go fast? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking the car for its last ride in its current form at least. This project is 
way too big to do in our workshop. There's just not enough floor space. So we're heading to the new shop that we rented only for this project. I think we have it for like 10 days, 12 days. And then we're gonna have to figure out what we do after that because it's obviously not gonna be done in 12 days. Rich and Laura and Marcos and all the rest of the crew is there. So we're taking the car there and it's not gonna exit it looking the same way. Culturally, I feel like people who really appreciate pickup trucks and people who really appreciate electric vehicles, like the overlap isn't that big. It's kind of two different crowds. I really want to drive electric just because it's not feasible for us all to like drive around in campfires. And also, I feel like I should pad this a little bit, but I'm not. Fuck oil companies, like seriously, fuck them. Well, there's no backing out now, partially because I'm not sure I could actually back out of this shop. <laughs> yeah, today is the first day in the shop, the first actual build day. And we're gonna start with weighing in the car to figure out how much it weighs and how the weight is distributed in the car so we can tell how much we changed the weight once we finished it and we'll start stripping out the interior. I know I said I wasn't gonna give the car a name before I'd finished it, not to get attached to it, but I've named it. Its name is Truckla, because it's a Tesla, but it's a truck. And also I talked about keying the trunk so that we get to a point of no return. We're gonna try to salvage as many parts of the car as we can, but the trunk we're gonna have to cut into pieces. So that one's gonna just be scrapped. So we can't key that. Okay, I'm gonna key the trunk. Wait, one more. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> this feels awful. Oh my god, it was really the point of no return. I don't understand why anyone would do this to anyone's car. This feels awful. I also really don't understand why anyone would do this to their own car. <laughs> it's official. You're gonna become a pickup truck. Cool, so what are we doing? Paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> One of the early decisions that we made is trying to salvage as much of the back body as possible. I think exposing the sheet metal will tell us a lot about how to proceed forward. I started as a race mechanic when I was very young. I built my first electric vehicle, a racing vehicle in 2009. I did electric racing. I've done some tra time trial racing with electric vehicles. Simone was starting to want to drive, rightfully so. She had stated that she never wanted to drive a gas vehicle. That segued into wanting a pickup. You know, we would throw it out there like, hey, you can do a conversion. And then, you know, things turned towards Tesla pickup trucks. <laughs> and here we are. The roof rack, unlike most trucks that just sit on the bed, I think we're gonna integrate it and it's gonna be part of our actual structure, like our cage. One of the main decisions we're gonna make is like where the truck bed goes. There's a lot of room above the battery. I think we can probably tub down into it. I'm thinking that having the bed on top would be the best decision. Wait, so the bed itself is on top? Yeah, where you actually store things. My name's Rich, and I run a YouTube channel called Rich Rebuilds. And in that channel, I primarily disassemble Teslas. So I'll take a car that's been underwater and flooded, and I'll take another car that was hit in the front end, like a front end collision, and then I'll take all the electronics from one car and transplant it to another. This all started because I was too cheap. Simone actually reached out to me via email, and she said she had a really cool Tesla-related project she was working on, and she wanted to bring me on board. And I said, whatever it is, I'm all for it. You could actually put as much as you want on top of the car. It'd be almost a dual storage space. If you just have some crossbars, that, that should give you, you that, that functionality. Yeah. I think it's really hard to foresee what we can do. Once we stripped everything and we made the cut, then we will know what possibilities we'll have. My name is Laura Kampf. I'm from Cologne, Germany, and I am a maker with a YouTube channel, basically just like Simone. I'm, of course, really excited to, to cut the roof. When she told me that she wants to make this pickup truck, it's clear that the roof has to go. So I'm really excited to just take the angle grinder and commit to it and cut it. I'm assuming that as soon as we start stripping out the car, it's gonna like blink with warnings and be like, something is wrong, something is wrong. Right. Figuring out how to convince it that nothing is wrong. Everything is the way it should be. Right. <laughs> That'll be your show. Yeah. When I was a kid, I got my first RC car 
and realizing that was a series of batteries, you know, electric motors and circuit boards. And I think as I got older, I said to myself, you know what, Tesla's are effectively one giant RC car. I think we have 12 days in the shop. Okay, We're obviously days. not gonna finish everything there, but I'm hoping that in that time, we're gonna have cut the car. If we make that cut, that'll be a significant thing to get done. Then we can spend a little time doing fit and finish stuff later. I think let's strip it, let's cut it, and then rebuild it and see what the possibilities are. Yeah. Okay. Those are going into each individual scale pad. Just picking out the corners now. 1,884 across the rear. 1,780 across the front. How does my butt look? Fantastic, I hope your pants don't rip this time. Oh God. <laughs> I just got new pants, I don't think that they're gonna rip. Ooh, there are bolts. Yeah? Is it a 10? Yeah, you win. Do we have it on camera or do you want me to say it again? <laughs> <laughs> One point to Laura, zero points to me. Guess the bolt size. It's a really boring game show. It's funny, it felt really forbidden to buy a car but somehow this does not feel forbidden. <laughs> this feels very allowed. So what we're doing now is just taking out all of the interior of the car from kind of the front seat and back so that we can start like just seeing how the car is put together and where we're gonna cut and make the truck bed. And also because nothing's sacred. We're ready to pop this out, you think? Uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, teamwork. Oh my God, this is so much fun. <laughs> I'm like in my happy place right now. So we're gonna try and start the car and see if it protests that the rear seats have been taken out. No! Safety restraint system fault. Contact <laughs> Tesla service. Oh shit. So smart. And knows what we have done. I'm sorry. So it's connected to 4G or whatever the cell network is. And so it's updating and telling Tesla all the faults in a given day. Snitch. Yeah. yeah, which is good for working out bugs, but bad if you're modifying your car. What the shit, Elon? Two clips right next to each other? Why? Seriously, though. Oh, that's satisfying, though. As a general rule, let's keep the tools off the top of this surface. Okay. Uh, stay away from the orange wires. Don't eat yellow snow. Teamwork. Make dream work. Teamwork, teamwork. I like it that it's all in metric. Crazy. It's yeah. It's an American company. Is metric because it's superior? Probably, <laughs> right? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Think so. That makes sense. There's a weird little clip here. Why is every clip designed differently? Oh, hi. <laughs> this is like a... <laughs> this is like a test. Okay. Nothing makes you feel dumber than losing against a teeny tiny piece of plastic. <laughs> I feel like God. you've been in here forever. They do it yet. <laughs> what day is it? I don't know. I think I might be in my 40s now. <laughs> oh, oh. Slow down. Okay. Okay. All right. Stop. You making a goofy face? Goofy face track. Yes, you are making one. Wait, really? I'm just kidding. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. <laughs> that was a really big step and we got it done day two. Okay. Choo choo. Good job. So we just finished stripping out everything in the car. We still have some wiring loom to pull back, but then we're ready to make the big cut. It's time. It really feels like we're preparing the car for surgery. 
Rich unplugged the 12 volt battery that goes to the main computer, so it's like asleep. <laughs> That's anesthesia. Marcos has been marking out like the surgery lines or the cut lines. And we're also putting out all these like welding blankets, which feels like putting out surgery cloth. Dressing the patient. Yeah. We kind of know what we're doing, or we don't, but we're very good at improvising. It's almost a year since I had my surgery, so there's a symmetry. Here we go. Here comes the big cut. Patient is stable. We're coming in about three minutes into the surgery. It's looking good. There you go. <laughs> This is like shaking my spine. <laughs> oh, fuck me. It's almost there. Yeah, I'm through it. Oh. So there's trouble in Trucla land. As soon as I got through the material, it started like folding into each other. And that just indicates that that beam is really structural, which we kind of figured, but we also thought maybe the battery pack would have enough rigidity in it to prevent any movement in the car. As soon as I got through that material, there was definitely some movement. And now we're just trying to mitigate that harm. I was so excited cutting through it, but now we have to be responsible and like make sure that we weld in support structures where we need them. So what we decided was to put it up on jack stands and try to support it better so it's not just on the wheels to make sure that when we make the next cut that the car won't shift and move. Okay, we're ready to remove these two beams. It's all hands on deck. That was fucking great. <laughs> we're getting there. It's still ways out, but we're getting there. I think it's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm glad you think that. So are we almost done, or I mean, how much, how many more minutes do you think we could put into this thing before it's Ship done? Ship it. How about while we make a bed today? A mock-up bed, so get a better idea of what it looks like. <laughs> Just to be clear, a truck bed, not like a general bed. Yeah, truck yes. bed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll put like a queen okay. bed here. Look, oh, look, here's a queen mattress. Yeah. <laughs> All right, not bad. After I trim a little bit more, we're on our way. Oh boy, here it comes. <laughs> At the smallest part over the wheel well, it's gonna be three feet and 11 inches, which is mildly infuriating because if it was just four feet, like I would be able to fit a four by eight sheet of plywood in here. But that's what you have a roof rack for. There's a lot of structural work that needs to be done. Like what we're doing now is just making the roll hoop and putting in all the different structural parts to replace all the pieces that we removed to make sure that the car doesn't let taco on itself and become a sad car. So here's an example of uh, a roll bar that could come in, go 90 degrees across a flat plane to the other side. Is the roll bar an exposed radius for the down sheet? Is how you, how the roll the bar an exposed radius for the down sheet? <laughs> <laughs> it's a book off. <laughs> it's a really funny <laughs> sentence. <laughs> So we're at a friend's of a friend's piece of property and we're scouting a location for a truck commercial. So I want to make like a classic looking pickup truck commercial for Truckla once it's finished. And we're like pulling in favors from all of our friends. 
scouting and seeing and like trying to plan all the shots. But look at this place, it's so pretty here. They just have this like huge workshop and property and there's like tractors and a mill. Fucking perfect location for a pickup truck commercial, even if it's a fake one. I'm flying to New York and then Hawaii and then New Zealand. And also Rich has gone back to the East Coast. Laura's back in Germany. It's gonna be all Marcos for a little bit. I'm rolling audio with time code. Will you give me a clap? Yes. Hey. So I'm obviously not in New Zealand, but I was, and it was great. I'm gonna tell you more about it in a later video. I am here with my favorite, not so great, yet really amazing car, Cheese Louise. Don't tell her about Truckla because her previous owner replaced her with a Tesla, so it's a little bit of a touchy subject. You know, she just doesn't need that type of heartbreak again in her life. Also, don't worry, she's not going anywhere. She has a very special place in my vehicular heart. So Cheese Louise might not be great for driving, but she is great for listening to audiobooks in, which is such a bad segue. Uh, bear with me. This video was sponsored by Audible, which is great because I genuinely love audiobooks and Audible has the biggest selection of audiobooks in the world and they're giving you a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Go to audible.com slash Simone to download a title for free and start listening. My recommendation is Artemis by Andy Weir. He's the author of The Martian and Artemis takes place on the moon in a colony and it's this like sassy scientific space action story and I enjoyed it so much. It's whatever the audiobook equivalent of a page turner is. Audible members get one credit every month that's good for any audiobook and unused credits roll over to the next month. You also get to keep your audiobooks even if you cancel your membership. So go to audible.com slash S-I-M-O-N-E or text S-I-M-O-N-E to 500-500 to get started. Okay, say bye to Cheese Louise because uh, we're heading back to Truckla. Truck love, look at you. <laughs> you guys have gotten so much stuff done. It's looking like an actual thing. It just, it looks proper. It looks like, like we know what really, we're doing. Yeah, it looks like we know what we're doing. We totally which have we, no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I mean. We're starting to get ready to put in the truck bed. And we have the truck bed, right? We do. So your pickup truck made the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, my truck blew up. It very generously donated its organs, also known as its truck bed. It's kind of funny that like we have Ford parts because yours was a Ford F-150 and right. also we got the rear window from a GMC Canyon. Yeah, Chevy. But it was really hard to find a rear window that would fit for truckless since it's so much more narrow than most trucks. Mm -hmm. But this one's a good size. Seven days until we start filming the commercial. Oof. Mm, that's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. We'll cut some corners, but make sure that we only cut corners that we can like tape back later. So one of the main structural pieces of Truckla is gonna be the roof rack. And we got this old roof rack off of Craigslist for like 200 bucks, but it's obviously way too big because like all trucks are bigger than Truckla. I have started cutting it apart and taking the paint off because it was super rusty, which is maybe not my favorite step of the process, but it has to get done, so. The truck is just look more or less the same for a couple of days. I'm really starting to get stressed out about time. There's so much prep work before you start putting pieces together. It means that once we start putting the pieces in, the rear view window and the tailgate and the truck bed, I'm just hoping that those steps are gonna be fairly quick. Fingers crossed. I mean, we have a whole crew coming in to film the commercial, so it would just suck to have to push it back. Get to it, Yetch. It's 4.20 a.m. We all just woke up, including Artie, who just got a matching car outfit, and he's gonna be in the commercial. Yeah, we're gonna head out to the property and try and catch the sunrise. I left the workshop a little bit earlier, like at nine. 
<laughs> to catch some sleep. And I think that Marcos and the crew have been working through the night, so I actually haven't seen where they're at. When I left, like the roof rack was not on, the bed wasn't painted, the bed rails were not bonded on. Anyway, we'll we'll see what the car looks like. Otherwise, we'll just fix it in post. Yay! Film day. So much work culminating in today. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be something. It's gonna be chocolate. The car just arrived and we're gonna start filming with it. We have a whole shot list and we have a bunch of drone shots that we're gonna get for this like fake truck commercial that we've been working on. Oh my God, will you look at that? Oh shit, it's looking so fucking good. I haven't seen it with a lumber rack on, but it looks freaking amazing. This is truck lift. It's so good. We made the mistake of getting fiberglass blankets. Like we wanted to get well blankets to protect all the cab and everything. And there's, I think like little shards of fiberglass just all over it, which makes it glitter. That's a upside, but it also stabs and pokes you everywhere. Oh, got such a good view. So one of the things about the Model 3 is that it can't see that much out of, out of the rear view window. It has a lot of blind spots. But this, I can fucking see everything. I think I can even look into the future through this mirror and the past. I can see everything. I am like Bram the Broken. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm gonna leave now. And that's it for the rest of the season. Okay, let's get the license plate out very important detail so this is a fake license plate this is not the the real deal i think this might be one of the better investments i mean the, the license plate i'm not sure about the car yet so this is Jax, who's uh directing the commercial and has like storyboarded it you can tell she's official by her radio <laughs> so one of the shots we're gonna have is me wearing a cowboy hat this is my westworld cowboy hat but also using the charger as a lasso. Is it lasso? I think it's lasso. Lasso? Really? Lasso? Lasso. Lasso. You American. Lasso. Lasso. So I'm going to use the charger as a lasso and then we're just going to have me walk up and plug it in. I've never used a lasso and I was hoping to be able to watch YouTube videos of how to do it, but there's no cell reception here. So it's just going to be my best guess. Been like the easiest film shoot ever because all I've done is just gaze. Scott was like, put on your Matthew McConaughey face when you're driving and I'm just like. So we just wrapped filming the commercial. There's gonna be links everywhere. I am so excited about this. I can't wait to post this and like just like when we've been driving on these roads when there are like barely any people as soon as somebody's driving past you can like see their heads turning and be like, what the fuck is that? But yeah, check out our very fancy commercial and of me gazing with all kinds of emotions, but very little facial expression. Truck yeah. It's like, fuck yeah, but truck yeah. So in the beginning of this project, I was like, I can't tell if this is gonna be the smartest or the most stupid thing I'm ever gonna do. And I'm still not sure. But what I am sure about is that I love Truckla so much. She's my absolute dream car. And it really took a village to make this happen. I mean, it was Marcos, Rich, Laura, Ryan, Trevor, Nathan, Will, Scott, Sauce, Asa, Jax, Ross, Rose, Jackie, like all of these people who came together to help make Truckle happen. And I put links in the description to each and every one of them in case you wanna work with them because I vouch hard. We're gonna keep on working on Truckla. 
I mean, it's completely drivable, but this is like the long haul part of the project because we need to waterproof it, properly seal off the cab, work on the interior, put in bed liner. There's a bunch of body work that still needs to get done. I wanted to get a new paint job. We need to work on the wiring. I also want to put in a lift kit, just like a little bit, it's a tiny lift. And I really want to keep on getting more people on board for this project. So if you're in the automotive industry in California and you wanna work on Truckla, shoot us an email. Our budget is limited to like high fives and snacks, but we're, we're pretty good company. Scott, tells them we're good company. The best company? We're, yeah, we're, we're the best company. <laughs> also, we made these awesome shirts. Truckla might not be for sale, but these shirts are. There's a link in the description. We're also giving a discount to all of our Patreon supporters. Plus, we made these key rings out of parts that we cut out of Truckla, and we're giving these away on Patreon too. Now, please go check out the commercial if you haven't already. I am so proud of it. I wanna print it frame by frame, turn it into a wallpaper and plaster my house with it. Thanks again to everybody who helped make this happen. Also, like, tweet at me, Elon. I'll give you a ride in Truckla. Okay, bye.